Roku was worried and made my throat tighten. Caught me right on the end of getting a drink there, but... At the same time, I felt like the other student's expression had stiffened as well. You... were dead? Do you mean hung? Yeah, that. What's the meaning of this? I mean, it means exactly what I said. Uh-huh. No way, so that wasn't a dream? Don't tell me you saw it too. Huh? Everybody had the same dream? Thanks, Mina. I woke up in front of the flowers, so I thought I'd nod it off. Rokuro, weren't you saying it was probably just a dream too? I mean, obviously we wouldn't be having class otherwise, right? Besides, the student and teachers in the other classes didn't seem to know. But Yoichan, you seem like you might. You found my actions this morning curious too, didn't you? Look, meeting your teach in the morning and him doing that all of a sudden is surprising stuff, right? Doing what? What'd you do to Rokuro? Uh, enough of that, for now. Uh, let's derive the, uh, Ginye. Who here had a dream about seeing Rokuro's hanged corpse? Raise your hands! The students glanced at each other nervously and reluctantly raised their hands. Everyone? What's going on? We're all of us sleepy? This is an occult phenomena, indeed. Oh, man. Hmm. First, I want to hear from everyone, one by one. I'll have you come out into the hall in seating order. Start with your seat number and name. If you know of anything unusual or curious that's happened lately, tell me. What's the intent of that? We're gonna solve this mystery, gang! There's no question there's a strange phenomenon going on, and I see some of you are feeling quite anxious. So my goal is to both grasp the situation and provide counseling, I suppose. Make sure to come in order, starting from the front left seat. Understood. Tina Etupirka, seat number four. Anything unusual, let us see. There have been rumors amongst the girls as of late. Some say they hear strange voices. Strange voices? Like what? Hmm, well, it's not as if I heard them myself. Inquire with Ia, if you please. Oh, I feel like I should take notes. I'm gonna lean back and, like, pop my chair. Where are my post-its? Aha, there they are. Let's see, and a pen. Oh man, I moved all my pens recently. There we go. I got the Zebra F701 with the Fisher Space Pen refill today, so you can hear that terrible click. Anyways, back to the game. Tina was a wealthy daughter from the Etupirka financial conglomerate. In short, a very large group that held considerable power in this area. So the girl herself, I guess I should say, I should say, hard to get a hold on. While her thinking in itself was sound, her unbending nature made it common for her to clash with other people, which was a bit concerning. It is a very strange occurrence for this class alone to all have the same dream. Hopefully it is a dream. Alright, you can go. Pardon me. Milady. Seat number two, Yuki Utashiro. I'm sleepy. That's nothing new. <laughs> you were the first witness, Yuki? I'm part of the campus cleanup committee, so I woke up early to water the flowers in the classroom. And then, I fainted as soon as I saw it. Yuki always seemed to be sleepy and half awake during class at best. However, she did good work for the cleanup committee every morning, so I didn't think she lacked diligence. Even if she nodded off in class. Not every day you see a corpse. It's alright, get some rest. Okay. I'm sure it was just a dream, yeah? But I don't feel like I slept at all. We are technically in class, so don't sleep now. Aww. She was all set to conk out, huh? Seat number seven, Ie Shishibe. Heya. Tina told me you've heard strange voices? Strange voices? Oh yeah, I did. Kind of like moaning. Ugh. Moaning? Ugh. Sort of like that. That's horrifying. I call that growling myself. Yeah, that's the ticket. 
Ia looked and acted flashy, but didn't behave badly or anything. I call her a lighthearted student. But occasionally she'd be too lighthearted and have that taken advantage of. Well, I don't know if that has anything to do with this, though. Right now, I want to hear what anyone has to say. Alright, you're done. Righty tooty. Righty tooty. Kashima Akebono, seat number one. No need to strain your voice so much. I am the class president, so I feel it's only expected of my title. So something unusual? I can't really say I know anything. Wouldn't even count Rokuro dying, honestly. Not even a person's death. Look, you just play and expect him to get murdered, right? Even if it was a mass dream. Well, I do expect you to earn grudges. Okay, I voted for zero during Werewolf, so it wasn't that. There have been countless times I might have gone through <laughs> my murderous intents, if not for the laws of this land. Oh. Uh, had it not been for the laws of this land. That's frightening. Evidently. Not gonna make a comment about the United States. We all know, probably all know what I'm thinking, so let's just not say that. Like he doesn't earn it with the things he does. I'd prefer if he was a simple skirt flipper, honestly. But that dude really grinds my gears. You're fine with the skirt flipping. Why not? It's just fabric. Kashima was overly serious, or maybe more accurately, she played by her own bizarre rules. Sometimes she'd make some dangerous sounding proclamations, too. And there had indeed been times nearly when she nearly went fist flying. She had a tendency to let her feelings overcome her a bit too often. Despite how she spoke, her eyes were wavering a bit, likely due to her over-diligent personality. With everyone thinking it was a strange dream, she might have been the one most disturbed by this incident. Well, okay, don't overdo it. You can go now. Excuse me. I am Sasuna Kano, seat number five. Ha ha ha, the god within me is speaking. They say things have been much too peaceful thus far. In other words, you yourself have nothing to know beside the incident. Jumping jalopy, jalopy jackpot. The heck does that mean? Why, just what it sounds like. Why is she making a face like it's only natural, I understand it. Well, I believe it to be a bad dream, but... Cessna, she surely loved the occult. She'd sometimes bring up spiritual matters, often making me unsure how to react. The phrases she used tended to be tended to get oddly stuck in my memories. In fact, I almost said them myself sometimes. Okay, you can go now. Raido regarded Rigatoni. I ain't. Mino Naridate. Naridate? Naridate? Um, seat number... Nine. Yep. Something strange? Hmm. T is teacher really a virgin? Who told you that? Ia. Yeah. Her, huh? The answer is no. That's messed up. That is just straight up messed up. Ooh, I see. So what's a virgin? That's where we're headed, huh? Oh well. Nothing from you then. Is this something you eat? It's a grade of olive oil. You're not exactly wrong. Okay. Got it. Okay, hold on. She don't got it. Mino was as lighthearted as Ia, or rather, she was basically floating. Wild would probably be the ideal word to describe Mino. Much like a feral child, her physical abilities were extremely high, but she mostly flunked outside of PE. Alright, you can come back to your seat now. Gotcha. Peace. Seat number six, Naki Korkiko. Kokuriko, huh? Let's see, I don't think I know anything. I haven't come to school in a while. Right, you can only occasionally come to school due to your performing work. Yeah, no helping that. Well, I mean, I think it was a dream. It's just all kinds of strange. Naki was active in the entertainment world from a young age and seemed par fairly popular, so he could only sometimes come to school. Even so, he was an excellent student who got above average test scores. His lack of attendance made it hard to show that on a report card, though. 
He apparently used a stage name, but I've never seen Naki on TV. Even though, according to him, he appeared pretty regularly. So right when you arrived, disaster struck. Don't put it like that, Mr. Yoinara. I'm a student of class 212. Right, sorry. You can go back now. Don't push yourself too much, Mr. Yoinara. Something's fishy here. Rokuro Yama Yamakagashi, seat number 12. Well, I wouldn't say that there's been anything too bizarre. Just getting my body tore up and hung and killed, but that's all. You're the one I want to hear from most. But seriously, that is all I've got. Basically, I'm the one who wants to know what happened to me. Rokuro was the most difficult person to deal with in the class, and the hardest to tell what he was thinking. Self-conceited not very cooperative, he was a load of trouble. If only we were a little more mature. Even if you don't know, I guess there's nothing I can do. That's right! You can go for now. I'll ask later if something strikes me. You want to talk to me that badly, Yoichan? Not right now. Nope. Feel free to leave. Rude. Seat number 8. Riku Takaso. What has me curious is how I heard you've been going to the local Abura Soba shop lately. Pretty much daily, if I hear right. How do you know that? Oh, because I go there too. Karuta loves Abura Soba. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna look it up. It sounds like there's noodles on it, so I can dig that. Abura Soba. What this? Oil noodles? Alright, what goes in here? This is one of those recipe websites where it's like, oh, I put my heart and soul into this, this dish because it reminds me of my family when I was two. Doesn't require soup base, it's cheap. Okay. A special shoyu and pork grease sauce placed at the bottom of the bowl. Oh man, if that was just like... Just noodles and chili oil, I could dig that. Alright, come to think of it, he does. Is that unusual? Constantly shaking my head at how you two can eat it so often never get tired of it. Riku was highly self-confident, looked down on others some, but proved a helpful sort. He and Karta got along well. I did feel like their friendship was mostly a, t a result of Karta's tolerance for giving Riku's eccentricity, though. You're getting older, Mr. Yoinara, so you should pay more heed to your health sooner or later. If I could die from a Burasoba, I'd be pretty happy with that. Karta said something similar. You guys are beyond help. If that's all you wanted to ask, you can leave now. Got it. Excuse me. That really was it? This is one weird class. Seat number three, Karta Uruwashi. Uruwashi. Something strange, huh? Like you eating a soba every day? Riku already mentioned that. Oh, I see. Then ask Riku later. No need to do that. Karta had no particular specialties, but he... Excuse me, but he hit a high average, you might say. He generally gave me the impression that he could shrewdly work out anything. Class full of rascals here. He had a big-hearted personality, too. No real fa faults to speak of. Faults. Nothing else in particular. Oh, the new Abura Soba shop they opened in Kantenbashi is pretty good. That is good info. Nice. Let's eat there together sometime, Mr. Yoinara. Later. You can go back to your seat. Okay. I'm getting the real local digs from students. Hi, Tominai. Seat number 11. Anything amiss? Ah, well, I won a ticket to an Emichan concert recently. Is she an idol? Yeah, yeah. You like her too, Mr. Yoinara? I just know the name. What? What a shame. She'll brighten up your life. Anyways, that's why we... That's why time... That's why, if time really got rewound, it makes me want to die. <laughs> I don't like pop idols, enough to sometimes skip school and go to concerts. Lately, he's been cautious not to let his grades drop accordingly, but... Show some moderation. If you make your truancy too obvious, they'll have to be extreme measures. Which is more important to you, Mr. Yoinara? Studying or living? I suggest you live and study. You can go now. Yep. 
Yep, indeed. Seat number 10, Zero Mon Monzanka. Nothing's really been amiss. I grew a little taller. You're still growing? How tall are you? 191 centimeters. Huh, that's outrageous. I wonder if this is a dream, too. It isn't right now, I'm sure. Figures. Zero had a large frame, making him the most conspicuous in the class. Often, he would react candidly, or be spacing out. Something that made me curious. I felt like people picked fights with him often, even students from other schools. Part of the problem was that he generally didn't turn people down. Considering how often I saw him with Rokuro, I couldn't take my eyes off him for a number of reasons. Alright, you can go now. Right. Ouch. Oh, see, that's a good shot of that little collar flap I was talking about. You sure are clumsy. Yes. Zero was the last one. I'll head back to the classroom. Well, I guess this kind of beats doing math, but only marginally, because one of your students had to die. Alright. As I thought, the students all seemed to believe this event was a dream. The death of a classmate. The reversal of time. True, they both sound like dreams. So what have you all ascertained from us? What all have? Okay. We just have the same mass dream after all. Something like that, right? No, I'm certain this is... The work of an Ayakashi. Say what? Ayakashi? How a cult? Hold on now, you can't just throw that word you can't just throw out that word casually and expect us to understand. For now, just listen to me. I did my doctorate in paranormal studies. Let me ask you all. It does the glasses thing. What do you think happens to people when they die? Listen, all I know is that people die when they are killed. Um, who would know without dying first? You go to the good place. Ah, heaven, right? There exists the world of gods, the world of spirits, the world of the dead, the physical world, and hell. We exist in the physical world. Oh, wait. It says that you can stop there. I'm guessing it'd be a long one. I really didn't tap Z. That was weird. There are many theories about the afterlife, but people generally believe that if the soul leaves the body, then that soul goes to some other world. To put it simply, that world and this world can be thought of as opposing shores. You guys must be pretty serious to be thinking about the afterlife while you're still living. Death is a once-in-a-lifetime event, after all. You don't have to sound too excited. Okay, that's a little too excited. Longing to know things that are hard to know might just be human nature. However, there are exceptional cases where souls can't reach the other shore. So it's not as if you go there immediately once you die. Souls with strong feelings towards this world will stubbornly refuse to cross over. Ah, like Jibakurai, the earthbound spirits. If only the soul wanders the world of the living, then that's what it is, yes. But on rare occasion, it may cling to its body and become a living corpse. It sounds like what you would call a zombie. You're not necessarily wrong. Simply put, since their body is dead, it won't mature anymore. To break it down to even simpler terms, they're ghosts that anyone can see. But if the process is quick enough, couldn't it be treated like a miraculous revival? Wouldn't it be possible for them to just return to living as normal, then? To jump ahead a bit, yes it would. And more troublesome yet, souls that dwell here too long begin to grow mad and lose control of their self. At the root of their desire to remain in this world lies an attachment to life. When a soul loses control, that attachment grows stronger and it attacks the living. So it becomes even more out of control. Right. That's why people like us send them to the other side. We call the deceased who seek to share the blessings of the living, Ayakashi. And we are their senders, so we call ourselves. I have heard the term. Something about a lineage of diviners forming a secession. I haven't, but... You're not a teacher, Teach? Well, I, always, I wasn't always set to be a successor, but then my elder sister died. I inherited the duty from her after quitting my old job and becoming the teacher I am now. So, you're saying this affair wasn't a dream, but an Ayakashi's doing? Man, that's the first time, instead of, like, Hitman moonlighting as a teacher, you have, like, Exorcist moonlighting as a teacher. <laughs> that's what I think, yes. 
Doesn't feel very realistic. It's too outrageous to keep up with. I'm going home, see ya. Sure, but if you look around, unrealistic things are happening. It's more believable to me that it was a nightmare we all had together. So Yoi Chan, whose fault are you saying it is? That I don't know yet. Judging from the fact that the effects have only been in this class, all I can say now is there's a possibility they're here in our class. There's an Ayakashi with Mino? Ho ho, I'd love to speak with them. Don't, won't they slice you up? If this were a manga, it'd be like you'd notice someone had a special aura or you used some sixth sense. But you can't tell, Mr. Yoinara? As I said, I wasn't originally meant to be a successor. Maybe my sister could have done that, but I can't. I wonder what'll happen tomorrow. Probably I'm gonna die again, right? Then we just need to protect Rokuro. It's currently unclear what circumstances led to Rokuro being attacked, though. Is there any way I could assist, Mr. Yoinara? I'll help out, too. And Mino. Alright. How about you gather up books on yokai? Yokai? Actually, those are referred to as Ayakashi, too. Is there a meaning to that? The beings we called Ayakashi have existed for a long time. We used Ayakashi in a specific way now, but the word far predates that. I'm thinking we'll look for creatures whose natures match our current phenomenon, and then go from there. I would have thought you'd be knowledgeable since that's your line of work. My previous job was totally unrelated to all this as well. I never believed that much in anything related to the occult, so I lacked that knowledge. Would Cessna know a lot? I do know more than the average person. But it's not all stored in my head like I'm a walking dictionary, I'm afraid. However, I may be a service in finding the proper literature. Alright, we're gonna do a lit search. We're all gonna read. Hmm, let's go to the library then. Are you sure? Aren't we having class? The principal's pretty lax. We'll manage. You're so gracious, Joy Chan. We're unionized, can't fire all of us. Kashima still doesn't seem to have digested the situation. Okay. My mouse is asleep. Let's save real quick. Wow, has it already been an hour? Sure has. Okay. Let us do the thing. Since we don't appear to have any other options on this menu. Alright, let's go search the library. I'm going to take a drink real quick. Nailed it. Climbing up some awfully creaky steps, we arrived at the school library. It was a snug little room, but filled with a large variety of books. There were history books, dictionaries, even somewhat dated manga and novels. Are there books on Ayakashi? Allow me to answer as the library assistant. There are also books in that small storeroom over there, you see. And I believe we'll have better luck. Oh, it's been locked. Going back to the first floor to borrow the key from the staff room would be troublesome. Mino can open it. <laughs> Won't open. If you need physical labor, it's my time to shine. No, hold on. We can't force it open. If we break the door, we'll be in trouble for sure. Then, um, how about lockpicking? Literally, could one of you go and get the key? Ah, oh, such a thrilling notion. I cannot perform it myself, however. I bet Rokuro could, right? Hey now, what kind of life leads somebody to learn lockpicking? No, I can't do it. Oh, well, you've totally got the personality of someone who could. Consider the full extent of my life, not just what I'm like. Uh, I can do it, I think. Really? That's a surprising skill. Surprising is an understatement. I couldn't have imagined it for a millisecond. Ah, uh, I was on the show once when the director was looking for realism. He had me practice over and over until I could just do it. It was a while ago, though, so I can't be certain. Are you sure it's not like a professional thief? Lockpicking? That needs a wire. Mino has one in a treasure collection. Whoa, amazing. Is that an extra dimensional pocket? Treasure? Are you sure it's not garbage? I'm getting a lot of like mixed messages here, and I have no idea what's going on. You probably shouldn't say that with an earshot of Mino. Well then, oh, hold on. Mr. Yoinara, will picking the lock get us in trouble? It's fine in my book. Ah, oh, that's good. Well then, I'll give it a shot. With that, Naki turned to the storeroom door and began to work. 
Just as I found myself thinking, what middle schooler can pick a lock? There's a small echoing click. And with the twist of the knob, the door opened with a slightly unpleasant creaking sound. A few of the students watching raised their voices in admiration. Alright, never do that again. Whoa, it really opened. Is there even a point in security measures? In this case, I believe Sir Naki's skill should be applauded. <laughs> I don't think it's a very commendable skill. Well then, now we can scrape together some books. Please give me a moment. Entering the storeroom with a forceful shout, Sesena started pulling books off the shelves at a rapid pace. I'll hold some books too. I'm a library assistant myself, but the duties always fall to her since I'm not around. Let Zero help too. He's super strong. Leave it to me. Sorokuro, won't you assist? Well, you gotta give the right job to the right guy, yeah? I'll go ahead and check these books for info on Ayakashi. I'm their first victim, after all. That's more efficient, right? Hmm, quite a convincing excuse coming from you, Sorokuro. He looks a bit like, um... Oh man, what's the name of that one Puyo Puyo character with the ladybug? Is it Sig? I think it's Sig. He looks like that. Thanks for the compliment, Cessna Chan. Uh, I'm really not one for reading. I guess I'll help carry. Via carry, Smina will carry too. That's what you girls are doing. I'll handle searching, I guess. Maybe I'll search as well. That's more my style. The students went dividing up duties. Ultimately, the book carrying group and the materials searching group were exactly of exactly even size. So, how should we look this up? For now, we'll make our judgments based on Rokuro's cause of death and predicament. You might not want to remember it, but if you could give a little more detail. I went home without making any stops, like usual, and sat at home like usual too. At least, I'm pretty sure I did. And then suddenly, someone's standing in front of me. Next thing I know, I'm in the 2-1 classroom. Even though I chained clothes at home, I was wearing my uniform. Before I could grasp the situation, someone gouged me hard enough to make entrails fly. Yeah, basically instant death. You're really something, kid. Mr. Yonara, I gotta use the bathroom. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Haido shot off like a rocket before I could even finish speaking. Well, sure, to call that an extreme description is an understatement. How are you even able to recall what happened so clearly? Hmm, it was a mystery to me too, what happens to people when they die. But then I experienced it. First, my soul left my body. I was looking at me. A near-death experience, or something like it, I suppose. It's not near-death if he actually passed away, though. Glad that was a dream, but all the stuff I sensed wasn't very dreamy. Didn't hurt? Maybe since they went so hard, all my senses died before I could even understand the pain. My ears were ringing the whole time. I couldn't understand anything except that, oh, I'm dying. Do you not recall who did you in? I remember, but I can't say it here. Why so unwilling? There's a sequence to thing, Yoi-chan. Now is not the time. It's amazing you can remember that much. I'm like, what was I just dreaming about? All the time, myself. So anyways, that Ayakashi, its attempt to kill me failed, obviously. Because they messed with the omnis and omnipotent and sage Rokuro-chan. What an exaggerated scale. That's the part where you're supposed to laugh, Yuki-chan. You will laugh at my jokes. We're talking about serious things here. We ta keep talking serious stuff, won't everyone end up like Haito-chan? So then, in what way will this guide us to our Ayakashi? To surmise from what we just heard, we have capable of kidnapping people and capable of tearing up bodies. So we need only search for an Ayakashi that possesses these two qualities? No, I want you to be thinking them separately. Very rarely there are Ayakashi that have incredible power, but... In practice, overly powerful abilities tend to destroy their fragile bodies. What if there were two? A freshly dead Ay amateur Ayakashi will be blown to smithereens. Calling an Ayakashi an amateur is strange in a lot of ways. The smart ones are apparently able to conceal themselves in our world without anyone noticing their unmaturing body. However, most are noticed by the people around them, and they come talk to us. So it's possible not much time has passed since they died. Actually, why would dying and being revived give them mysterious powers anyway? It's probably the two kids. They probably did it. We've got something to do with it. I hear that the heightened power of their soul caused by their attachment to life does something or another. 
that isn't exactly a point that you should be so vague on, is it? But if that's the case, that means there are two? Come on. At least. It's also rare for Ayakashi to cooperate, but it's not unheard of. Could there be others, I wonder? Personally, I'm most curious about the reversal of time. But at the current stage, who knows if it was actually reversed or what? Since there is a possibility it was a prophetic dream or the like. I... I cannot believe that was a dream! Table pounding. Kashima pounded a desk and shouted to interrupt everything we were saying. Whoa. Dramatic piano music. What are you shouting for all of a sudden? I find it much harder to accept that what I felt then was just fiction. My happiness at being invited out after school the day before, and how I looked after Yuki when she collapsed. The weight of Yuki's head on my legs, and my thought of why did Brokuro have to die? The way you always treat me, you sure didn't think serves him right. <laughs> of course not. Sure, Rokuro's not a good person, but he's not a bad person either. Um, I heard a loud voice over here. What's... Whoa, what's wrong, Kashimichan? Rokuro finally make you cry? Rokuro, you no good. No, 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 it wasn't me, okay? Kashima, you've been quietly enduring this the whole time. You did seem to have taken this incident the hardest out of everyone. I see. When he asked about it this morning, I said probably just the dream and laughed it off. I'm sorry. Besides just Rokuru, I can't imagine there are any bad people in this class. There's me. Looking at everyone here, as the class president, I can't think anything else. You're right. It's unbelievable that be there'd be a villain among us. <sighs> it's totally fine to have ideals, but in the end, you're just hoping, right? Now hold on, you didn't have to phrase it like that. The game of werewolf was a metaphor for the fact that someone evil is among us and we don't know who the werewolf is. Then would it be okay with then would you be okay with it if you died tomorrow, Aya Chan? You saw how I kicked it. I didn't die because I wanted to die. Somebody did the deed. Feel free to go into a little more detail until nobody can help but believe there's a killer among us. Rokuro, give it a break. Rokuro! His body went numb from Zero's shout, the likes of which I've never heard before. Zero approached Rokuro and lifted him up a little roughly with one hand. I'll borrow this. And I'll apologize in your place. Kashima, yeah, sorry. Why are you apologizing, Zero? Yeah, it's Rokuro who's saying all that mean junk. He just doesn't know how to use his words very well. Forgive him. You realize you're still agreeing with me that it's wishful thinking, right? You're some idiot yourself, Zero. Kashima, Chan, Ye Chan, you shouldn't put much hope in other people. I think you'll live more comfortably that way. Ow. Still holding with one hand, Zero firmly hit Rokuro in the back with the other. And just like that, they vanished among the bookshelves. Wow. I've never heard Zero shout like that. Wow. Kashima, Chan, you okay? Yes, sorry. Thanks. I must admit, Sir Rokuro's excuse had a bit of logic to it. For when humans interact with others, they hide that which is inconvenient to them. More importantly, we must quickly find our bearings regarding the Ayakashi. For time is limited, isn't it, Mr. Yoinaro? But teacher, is it okay to leave those two alone? Zero had a real stern look, it was kind of scary. Indeed, I am curious about those two, considering how Zero was acting. However, how Kashima and Ia feel after all, that is also a concern. Like Tina says, if someone's gonna die again tomorrow, we need to be quick in searching these materials. I'll... Oh, plot, plot point. Oh, I can't save here either. Uh, hmm. The impression that I'm getting is that someone else will die tomorrow. So it doesn't make a lot of sense it doesn't make a lot of sense to go after Rokuro but we've just witnessed that Zero can pick up Rokuro with one hand and he was hung from the ceiling which means that if there is in fact someone capable of doing this among them it would have to be someone strong enough to pick him up so it's probably either Zero or ourselves 
which seems like the way to go. But also, I feel like Kashima and Iya would be the moral thing to do, and researching Ayakashi is kind of a throwaway option, even if though we're the educated ones, supposedly. So, I will go after Zero and Rokuro. Maybe. Alright, let's do it. We commit. As you say, Riku, those two are a bit concerning. Might be a needless worry, but Zero's strength is no laughing matter. I'll go take a look. Right, link me to search through the books. How big is this room? Headed for the shelves in the back to look for the pair. Found them standing side by side in a blind spot formed by bookshelves. Mr. Yoinara. I apologize for shouting so li loudly here in the library. No, that's fine. I was trying to stop Rokuro myself. So, speaking of Rokuro... What, were you worried Zero was going to punch me or something? He wouldn't do a thing like that, Yoichun. Didn't you know that? I thought it was a possibility, but he isn't behaving any different than usual. I was just as worried about you, Rokuro, so that's why I came over. Hmm. Doesn't seem like you care. Nah. Rokuro says such things with ill intent, but he does properly think before he acts. Are you sticking up for him? <laughs> Zero never lies, remember. Well, I'll get back to helping. So long. Hey, if you just go back now. It's no problem if I'm helping up Cessna-chan, right? I guess. You sure hang out with Rokuro often, and even go as far as covering for him. Please don't say it like that, Mr. Yoinara. At times, I envy Rokuro, and I respect him as well. Can't imagine why. The thing is, before you get to know Rokuro, he does things like this which puts everyone at a distance. So, Mr. Yoinara, I ask you look kindly upon Rokuro. You might ask me to explain myself, but he's not the kind of person who can be easily explained. That's a tall order, I won't give up on him. Not gonna give up on a student. I'm sure he has his reasons. Mr. Yoinara. Right, you treat Rokuro well for me. Okay, I better go now. Have to find some materials or else. Right. The question that I have now is that in the introduction, we see Yoinara, like, panting while standing in the classroom, and he's drawing out, like, a tanto or a short knife. So possibilities. Man, I can't believe how many copies of the same book this place has. Unreturned books were a frequent occurrence, as I'm told. Huh. Well, at any rate, this much should be plenty. Making multiple copies of everything with the expectation of them being stolen. Our principal's absurdly heavy-handed, huh? There's been a sharp decrease in that since I became a library assistant, however. Parentheses, relatively speaking. Close parentheses. But you still need this many, huh? Well, how's progress looking? A bit troubled. We still haven't found anything. I've been looking for Ayakashi with qualities resembling capable of ducting and capable of tearing people up, right? I see. Should we help look then? Should we help look too, then? Ah, uh, how about this? The Albozu. There's also the Yama... Yamamba. Or how about the Suchigumo? Tengu? It's quite a few that could fit when it comes to abducting people. As for attacking people, Kamaitachi? Oh, but they heal the wound. Wolfmen? Do they count as yukai? There's also Nekamata, I guess. Well, anything to narrow it down helps. Finding a link to the events of their life will make it easier to get to the specifics. The events of their life? Because Ayakashi have an abnormal amount of attachment to this world, you can expect their life provided a reason for that. For kids around your age, the most common thing would be familial circumstances. Ah. So in other words, wouldn't that be the kind of matter they wouldn't dare talk about? Let me append a bit out about Ayakashi. To send an Ayakashi of the next world, they have to be made aware of their death. Memento Mori. And Ayakashi extremely disliked becoming aware of how they died. Only makes sense, I suppose. I wouldn't say Ayakashi don't feel guilt but their attachment to life beats out all other emotions. And Ayakashi confessing of their own accord will more or less never happen. And more troublesome is that sometimes they're not even aware they're in Ayakashi. Meaning, you have to expose them by force? In a case like this, where no one notices what they are, that you do. Gosh, even when you're alive, though. There's all kinds of stuff you wouldn't want no others knowing about. 
Yet, it's utter absurdity to say we should hand over our lives for such a reason. Just because time was reversed at once does not mean it will happen again tomorrow. In which case, someone's really gonna die. Ugh. Um, this is getting really scary all of a sudden. Still, there's no guarantee someone will die tomorrow either. We have to do whatever possible to avoid the worst case scenario. But what do we do now? I'd like to go out and check some different materials, personally. Can Mino go too? No, I'm afraid I can't think of a good excuse to take my students outside. But you can't just leave us either, right? Ugh, we can manage something. Another teacher asks or whatever, we just need to give some excuse. I'd appreciate if you could, but... We just gotta make a scarecrow that looks like Mr. Yoinara. Ooh, that might be good. Then we'll be found out if anyone looks too close. Just the wind. With a mop from the broom closet, I believe we can make something convincing. True. If we dip it in a little ink, they should notice it's a mop at a glance. Do I resemble a mop that closely? Well then, I'll hurry out. You get back to the classroom. Understood. I'll keep a close eye on everyone. But the principal was walking around on the third floor earlier. It'll be trouble if he sees you and asks what's up. You're right. Maybe you should go during the break after this period? Hmm, that does make sense. Getting caught could be really costly. There's only about 10 minutes left. Guess I'll wait. Realistic passage of time. Okay. Let us throw a save out here. No way it's been an hour and a half. Oh, it really has. Okay. Who's all the way over here? Oh, me. Naki and Karta. What's poppin'? Hey, it's Mr. Yoinara. What's up? I've got time until I can leave, so I just thought I'd take it easy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, I was just talking with Naki here. Yep, nothing interesting, though. Lockpicking yours is pretty amazing, though. Uh, so, like, do you do your own stunts? <laughs> I'll do a certain level of action, but not anything that could really hurt. So you do refuse in that case. Yeah, I'd hate not being able to attend school more than anything. Even still, we haven't been able to hang out as much as old times. What kicked things off for you? An audition? No, nah, I was scouted. While I was out somewhere a bit far from here. Whoa, amazing. While you're working so hard, I'm over here like, this food's tasty. <laughs> I'd still call that happiness. We've been so busy lately, often I've had to get on, get by on, like, a sandwich from a convenience store. Mm, is that right? That'd be rough for me. Well, once this case is settled, let's all go out for something tasty. Kartikun, I'm guessing your rec recommendation would be a tempura place again. I mean, hey, they've added a bunch of them in the past few years. You have any favorite foods, Naki? Huh? Me? Hmm, I'm not picky. Is there anything I especially like? Maybe strawberries? Sounds like the answer an idol would give. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the most I can do for meals is eat a bunch of strawberries, so... Oh, then maybe you should get a giant parfait at a cafe. Do they make giant parfaits? Yeah, they're super huge. The other day, it took five of us boys working together to take one down. I bet Zero can eat plenty, though. Nah, well, with sweets, it's bad to ingest too much at once. Am I gonna be okay after that? Sure, the flavor is good. Makes you want to eat till you drop. I was wondering what kind of fun could be had in a rural town, but it sounds like you do plenty. No karaoke or bowling or anything, though. As long as it has a train station, I think it's fine. Good point. Kartikun, do you have any dreams for your future? We're really digging into, like, we went from, like, what are you talking about? Favorite foods, acting, lockpicking? Oh, what are your hopes and aspirations for the next five years? <laughs> My old man always pesters me to inherit the family business. Don't see it happening, though. I see. We're too immature to resist our parents still. Oh yeah, what about Mr. Yoinara? You know, dreams and stuff? My dreams? Yeah, tell us. I'm kind of curious myself. Dreams. I think it would be a worthwhile job to master teaching. I mean, I've got my hands full just watching you guys. Might be hard to call it a dream, but maybe my goal is to master the job I'm doing now. Maybe. Huh, what a nice thing to say. Yeah, I'd like to keep taking lessons from you too, teacher. Can't teach you how to lockpick, though. 
Let's see. If I weren't being locked in by my family, I might aspire to being a teacher myself. I see. You can generally accomplish anything I find, so I think you'd be highly valued here. <laughs> Definitely stand to be a few more teachers around here, yeah? There's a lot to the job. It's physically and mentally demanding, and I respect those who do it myself. I think Riku's better at teaching, though. Maybe the best of us? Well, but I have to say that Mr. Yoinara is great as well. He always gets the gist of things for me. Oh, is that what you're doing when you stay after class? It's probably just my nature, but I've always sought efficiency. Wow, can you cook too? Nope. There's this handy thing they call meal delivery these days. This video was not sponsored by Blue Apron. Okay, say no more. Man, but really, there sure are a lot of great restaurants around. Makes you want to eat real bad. Kartas is talking about food non-stop. Granted, Naki's diet is cause for concern. I feel like I learned something. Let's drop another save. Hmm. Let's see. After this video, which was sponsored by Nalgene. It's not. Um... Is this Mino's icon? I kind of want to talk to her a bit more. If I had to hazard a guess, if anyone was a dead body, it might be Mino. My email keeps going off. That comment on her student ID that said she smells like forest is a little fishy, but she also might just really like the outdoors, which is understandable. Oh, Mr. Yoinara, you want to play too? It was my intent to be playing. What were you up to? Reading these books on yokai, even besides our goal, they're just very intriguing. Lots of pictures, fun stuff. They're not manga, you know. It's Mr. Yoinara and Ayakashi too, that's foreshadowing. No, senders are different from Ayakashi. You do have a slightly different air from your average human, Mr. Yoinara. I'm uncertain about how I should interpret that. Well, but my grandmother was at times called a demon child. This is bringing back memories of a quote, you're a demon child, but... Dots. I didn't mean to bring up bad memories, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's getting that response that feels more iffy than anything. But not many heroes of justice take on human forms. I've got no connection with the kinds of hero you're talking about, but is that meant as support? Wait, but Ayakashi don't take humans' forms either. Maybe she wasn't particularly trying to support me then. I always took you for a realist, Kashima, the sort who would just snort at this kind of stuff. Look, even I've got curiosities and interests. Who doesn't? I even have some degree of interest in this sort of occult folklore. Only as interesting stories, of course. It's not like I believe it at all. Mina believes, because she sees things. Oh. You can see. Huh. I have heard animals are better than humans at seeing such things. Wait, but Mino's not an animal. Mino, I believe you only came here for middle school, so you don't know much about this area, do you? Hmm, don't know about the world below. What are you, a god? Hey, so what was Kashima like before? Me? I was no different from now, I think. I've only known you since middle school myself, Kashima. Hmm, people who know me since grade school do tell me I look different. Oh, in what sense? It used to be short, my hair, I mean. I wonder if the bell is like some kind of like, oh, you've you've won a point for something. Though my bangs are still short now since they get in the way. I always figure people like Yuki must have a hard time taking care of their hair. Right, when you put it that way, I can understand. Mino's bangs get in the way too, but she can't cut them good like Kashima. Don't just make one big cut, straighten out a little bit at a time. Personally, I'm curious what you used to be like, Mr. Yoinara. Me? Well, I wasn't born here, and I came here later in life. Also, my previous job kept me busy, so I was a workaholic. You work hard on teaching, too? Sure do. With you as my class, I'm busy every day. I see. Then, Mr. Yoinara, do you ever regret changing? Regret? I don't regret my choices. Nah, I always make choices based on what seems right in the moment. 
I try to avoid regretting it. That's right. Yes, it's your path to choose in the moment. You gotta lose yourself. Looking ahead when you walked is important. The reason I changed didn't come from myself, but rather had to do with other people. Still, the worst thing to do would be to put the blame on someone else. Feeling troubled? Mina will hear any troubles. No, I like to handle it myself as much as possible. I don't believe it's a good thing to be over-reliant. I feel you're always giving quite an effort, Kashima. And Mino? You are too, Mino, in all sorts of ways. Hmm, <laughs> that's right. Forcibly pushing on by yourself makes it difficult to tell if you're on the right path or not. I bet you have a lot of hardships yourself, Mr. Yoinara. Being an adult must be tough. You should see how much they take from us in tax. Adults are more fragile than you might think. After all, things break the longer you keep using them, right? Mr. Yoinara, are you breaking down? Yes. Nah, I'm okay. But I need to take care to periodically examine myself so that it doesn't happen. Indeed, humans need maintenance or else they'll fall apart. That's why I drink joint juice. Mina will maintain ants too. I feel like Mina's already got one foot on a runaway express train. <laughs> I feel like I learned something. Okay. I'm gonna save yet again. Hmm. What's poppin'? Let's talk to Yuki a bit. Who's over here? Come on. Yeah, and Yuki. Hmm, Mr. Yoinara. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to intrude on anything. There's just some time until class is over, so I thought we could talk. Why are we doing a better job now at counseling than we did early in the morning? Like, hey, sit down, give me your name and seat, and then, uh, you see anything weird? See your classmate die? Okay, good, go back. Would you consider yourself able to come to a girl's conversation, Yoi-chan? Can't say I'm confident about that. Ahaha, even if you're confident enough to say yes, that'd be pretty startling. It's amazing how you never run out of things to talk about you. Really? I just read magazines and watch TV, and come across lots of things I want to talk about with people. Oh, well, there's lots of places here that seem to have tasty food. I gather that food is a pretty central theme in this game. Not that I could disagree. You got that right. Even though a bunch of people have left since that incident. Makes me wonder how they keep their businesses running. Yeah, well, the streets around Kantenbashi are still busy. Plus, it's just fewer people. There's still buses and trains. So it's not that big a hindrance to people's livelihood, I guess. What happened in this town? More and more stores are closing, though. Mm, I wonder if there's a way things can get busier here again. Yeah, the government could just dump a bunch of money and invest in, like, a university or something. That's usually what happens. Oh, man. Oh, boy. My phone's freaking out. But I like when there's not as many people. It lets me relax. Because there's no one else around you, Chan. I can play with you lots and everyone else. Play lots with you. Yuki. Uh, yeah, you're so right. I like you too, Yuki. Uh, huh. Sure enough, it's extremely difficult to intrude on this conversation. Is there anyone you like, Mr. Yoinara? Huh? Ooh, I'm kind of curious. Like, Kono-chan's really pretty, right? Kono Hazuku, the music teacher? I mean, she is, and a good teacher, too. But... That's merely what I think. I don't especially feel anything, plus she might be afraid of me. Why? Hmm, yeah, you do seem to be feared by most people but us. But if you think about it, you can study, and you're pretty athletic, Yoichan. Yeah, sure. A dependable guy like you should be more popular, I feel like. Are you sure it isn't because you don't smile much? Ah, that's the ticket. You gotta do it like this. Smile, Yoichan. This is one of those situations where we're gonna smile, tell us we're creepy, and we're never gonna smile again. Well, this is sudden. I can't possibly force a smile. Hmm, it's hard to smile just because you're telling me to. Huh? Really? I think people would be friendlier if you smiled, though. Do I really smile that little? What? Are you not actually aware of it? Even when you're mad, you don't feel very mad, Mr. Yoinara. Yes, well, as a teacher, isn't that proper? No, when you're, like, quietly angry, that's actually scarier. Then again, like, 
It seems people in our generation, or at least our class, aren't that bothered by it. I wonder if that's the reason it keeps recurring. Okay, whatever. Uh, maybe there are just a lot of us who are kind of self-centered. Everyone had a clear idea of their opinions and what they like to do. Might be a little jealous. I think we didn't do the right choice here. You don't, Yuki? I want to sleep forever. Oh. Yeah, um, that's not a subject we can talk out. Well, even if they cause some trouble, our classmates aren't bad kids. Probably. I consider them to be vicious even if they lack ill intent. Were you mischievous as a kid, Yoichan? My grandmother was a harsh person, so I was obedient to avoid her wrath. Oh, then maybe being scary when you're angry is effective. Then again, when you get scary, even I think it's a little much. Hmm, I just want people other than us to know you're a good guy, Yoichan. It's never felt like a big deal to me. You don't need to worry about it. But I wanna, just like, for the sake of my own feelings. I can't stomach people being afraid of you just because of what's on the surface. I'm made plenty happy just by the fact you feel that way. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Looks like Ia Chan still can't accept it. First things first, I'm surprised she trusts me that much. Yeah, she's really concerned for you, Mr. Yoinara. Because you're a good teacher, you don't intrude on things that she doesn't want brought up. But that's... well, okay, fine. I feel like we've got a very complex story going on here. <laughs> Alright. Can't believe it's been that long. Okay, so we've done these three. We've got three more. Man, how long do these conversations take? I'm sure it's been more than ten minutes at this point. Okay, come on. Cessna and Tina. I think what I'm going to do is read the rest of these conversations and then call this particular recording session. And we'll see what I do with this. I'm almost inclined to dump an hour at once, but... I don't know. We'll find out whenever the first video comes out. Oh, if it isn't Professor Yoenara. Sesson and Tina, that's a rare combination. Oh, I believe us to have a considerable companionship. Indeed, I suspect you would say that no matter who I was with, Mr. Yoenara. Well, but it, but if you're chatting out with Rokuro, I might think there'd be a cataclysm on the horizon or something. I must agree with you there. Hmm, if you ask me, that might be a case of disliking those who remind you of yourself. And I will not deny that either. Humans are strange creatures, oft fighting with one another due to none other than their own resemblance. You say that like you've had a sudden revelation, Tina. Well, I also believe you view things in a more objective way than the others. This is a class of really messed up, like, I don't know, 12, 13 year olds. I could say the same as Sir Rokuro. It's like you're always taking a step back to observe the full picture. Though, uh, Sir Rokuro's proficiency is then proceeding to make attacks on people. To think one's mouth could endlessly spout such sarcasm targeted at so many people. I can respect it, in a way. I think you're no slouch yourself. Yes, but I believe you couldn't do that without knowing what kind of a person you're dealing with. I'm envious as can be of that supreme level of insight. Come to think of it, Werewolf is a game that places emphasis on that. Indeed, and such is why Sirokuro and Lady Tina were so powerful. This is one big metaphor for Werewolf, man! There were also numerous players that were all too easy to figure out. Madame Kashima is quite emotional, and Sir Zero may appear hard to read, but his expression is tell-all. Even Madame Sessina tends to show with her face when she's feeling tense. Sir Rokuro never trusts anyone to begin with, almost as if he's given up on relating with others. Could something have happened regarding your own relationships, Mr. Yoinara? Hmm, what makes you think that? You intentionally, or no, I think unconsciously. It appears as if you're holding back your expressions of emotion. And from the pause in your last statement, I wonder if you aren't somewhat aware. Whoa, would you look at that? Where can one buy such a keen eye? With a cool head and a keen eye. It may be called my pedigree, for I must put on the perfect look in my dealings with other people. You could be dead. I would feel like a rich family would definitely keep around, like, the dead spirit of one of their kids. 
Hmm, I'm good at investigating, but it's hard to know how to teach myself such powers of conjecture. Humans aren't creatures one can define and divide into some number of categories, after all. I suppose one should first start by knowing their own self well, before they turn to others. Your own self? Indeed, so Mr. Yoinara, could I ask you to offer your services as a teacher? When one confronts themselves, where should they be looking, do you think? When confronting yourself. Hmm. Parts you like or the parts you dislike? I would almost wonder if, like, the parts you like kind of mask your own objectiveness about your own disliked personality traits. So let's go with the parts you like and see what happens. Are the parts you like, maybe? Oh dear, that's too bad. I suppose that's the level you're on after all, Mr. Yoinar. Okay, we screwed up. Sounds like that wasn't correct. Find many things you dislike about yourself. This is what Father told me. He said to even treat others as mirrors and know yourself as best you can. This is like that job interview question with like, uh, name your biggest strengths and your biggest weaknesses. I get it. That must be a cause in disliking those similar to you too. It strengthens one's mind the longer you can look at yourself. I thought it would be, we'd be go a little deep, but we went a little too deep. It does seem like your spirit would be the first thing to give in. And when you go accustomed to peering within your own depths, you naturally start to see what others are hiding and what they dislike. For people's very natures reside in those depths. I see. I've learned a lot. Haven't you, Mr. Yoinara? Uh, I mean, it might prove necessary for the situation, but... Ah, oh, that's right. If I might append something to my observations about Mr. Yoinara earlier. I might even think that he's given up on himself. Given up, you say? Sorry, but you got that wrong. I'm more unwilling to resign myself than you think. Ah, oh, that's too bad. Even I have a ways to go, perhaps. Incidentally, I wasn't aware that my tenseness showed in my face. Indeed, but it is difficult to be aware of actions you do subconsciously or on instinct. What words would stimulate your depths in such situations? Reaffirm that, and werewolf is a piece of cake. I get it, I've learned much from this. Now the next time I play werewolf, I'll pulverize, scandalize, and mesmerize. Is scandalizing really necessary? You make a good point. <laughs> I look forward to the next time we can contend, Madame Cessna. Yes, absolutely. I have my honor to uphold, and so I refuse to lose in a game of my own suggestion. Was it you who spread the game, Cessna? I've brought in pretty much all of the tabletop games you see played at school. Is Stratego still a thing? There are many others, so I encourage you to try them yourself. You aren't too busy during summer break, are you? Well, I'm in the classroom, maybe. Hmm, then I will speak to you then. If I kept playing games like Werewolf, I could see myself getting tired out by all this suspicion. And actually, wasn't bringing games in to school supposed to be banned? I feel like Tina read a little too much Artemis Fowl growing up or something like that. Alright, let's drop another save and keep going. 141. Doing good. I think I'm kind of redundantly dropping saves since it auto saves and that's probably how I can get the time. Hmm? What's up, Yoichan? I was just talking what you I was just curious what you two were talking about. Well, I was asking him about earlier. And I was saying nothing fun happened or anything. Whether you did anything fun or not is not what I was asking. You live so seriously, Riku-chan. Isn't it better to do fun stuff in life? If making your people feel terrible is your idea of a fun time? I think I messed that up. If making people feel terrible is your idea of a fun time, I reserve the right to despise it. Aw oh, man, that's a shame, because I don't hate you, Riku-chan. But I take it you don't like me, either. Oops, you got me. If you keep that nonsense up, even Zero's good graces will run out someday. Hey, that bridge will, that bridge will burn when we get to it. <sighs> I truly can't understand why you two get along. I think that oh, there's a name for the phrase that I can't recall, but that concept of like, we'll burn that bridge when we get there, was originally a combination of two different sayings where it's burning bridges and then crossing that bridge when we get there. So now it's combined into, we'll burn that bridge once we cross it or something like that. Anyways, verbiage. 
<sighs> I truly can't understand why you two get along. I can't figure it out either, why you and Karta-chan get along, that is. True, I believe Karta only recently transferred here in first year. I mean, you can't just ask a thing like that. What can I say? Karta and I, we suit each other. Hmm, <laughs> then that's what I'll say about me and Zero, too. After what I saw earlier, it's hard to just agree with that. Do you two fight? Hmm, <sighs> it's mostly just Zero getting mad at me. I've never really had complaints about Zero myself. Must be rough for Zero. Almost makes me pity him. Yeah, I gotta admit, he's real softy. I suppose I have similar feelings about Karta, though. Say, so, Yoichan, what do you think of these sorts of inescapable relationships? Hey, 15 frames of flavor text, here's a really deep question about life. Pick the right answer. Well, that was sudden. Inescapable relationships. I feel like ultimately good is the right one, but my gut's been pretty bad lately. Uh, uh, mm. They're hopeless, but ultimately good. Let's be positive about this. Hmm, they're sort of hopeless, but I believe they can be for the best. Uh-huh. Yep, I agree that they're for the best. Alright, that was good. Hard to put them into words, but good even so. I guess that's true. Come to think of it, have you even got friends, Yoichan? That's a rude question. I got people I go drinking with. Though, since becoming a teacher, that's gotten more uncommon. Huh? So you've got no friends here? Poor you. What about the other teachers? They keep their distance, oddly, or maybe they're concerned for me. Yeah, you sure do give unapproachable at a first impression, Yoichan. He's right. Though, talking with you like this, you just strike me as a worn-out, middle-aged guy. We're getting there. That's a bad impression in its own way. But still, like you said earlier, Karta and I have only been friends starting in middle school. It hasn't really been long enough to say our relationship is inescapable. Right, that's true, but Karta was quick to fit in. There's only a handful of kids his age, and many of the people here are kind, with some exceptions. There's some cruel kids, too. Come to think of it, you also transferred in the middle of grade school, didn't you, Rukuro? Yep, in fifth grade. Did you now? Good job fitting in. He seemed like a quiet type at first, then at some point he started to talk. No, rather, it's like he was chanting incantations of some sort. Hey now, that was his proof that we were getting along. Thinking of it that way, maybe the class as a whole is in inescapable relationships. What is it like to truly be among your fellow man? We're a tight-knit community. That's the jargon I like to hear, kid. I see. All, too, all told, the two have a lot to say about it, but they don't seem to think badly of each other. That's not bad. Alright, one more. Drink. Save. And who's talking over here? Zero and Haito. I don't think- have we spoken much to Haito? What's this? Were you worried for Haito too, Mr. Yoinara? My cursor out of the way. I guess worry is applicable, sure. It's fine, I've calmed down a bunch. Whew, I'm really not cut out for this. Hey, Yuki fainted too. In fact, the strange thing here is how the rest of them can bear it. Yes, indeed. Some of our classmates even think it was a dream. Plus, there are many of them who've been interested, who have always been interested in this sort of occult business. Yeah, even back in grade school, we did stuff like tests of courage and expeditions in the night. Sounds dangerous. Some would say you learn danger by getting hurt. That's its experience. In reality, well, I can't handle scary stuff, but I like sharing that tense excitement with everybody. Actually, when Zero's there, it's wild how relieved I feel. You always did send me out in front. So you don't know any fear. Fear is the mind killer. I find people who abruptly pick fights with me all day more scary, painful, and unpleasant than anything. That's rough. To think, when Zero himself is so nice, like, he even slows his pace to match mine. You lack stamina, after all. You're weak. Walking is tiring, okay? And how does that work out for you when you're going to concerts? When it comes to that, I've got a hollow leg. Uh, or an extra pair of legs, I guess? So in addition to break a leg, there's also spare two legs. You're really mixing your sayings here. You know, Zero, you're pretty muscular. 
No, no, screw them. Do you work out? You get jacked. Indeed, it's important to build strength. You almost always slack off during swimming lessons in PE, Haito. I don't teach secondary subjects, so I wasn't aware. You're a slacker when it comes to all those, huh? That's a mean way to put it. I've got terrible asthma, so I can't push myself too much. Ah, oh, I see, you can't help that. This is like, now that I'm kind of sitting here and taking it all in, this is a little bit like, um, oh, what's this came out? Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, based on that really messed up book that some of us read as kids. And it's like, this is kind of similar context, except with, I wouldn't say more likable. They're more likable to me, but more, I guess, eccentric, eccentric, unusual kids. I don't know what I think about this, but hey, we're going. He got worse at, the, at one point. He was in the hospital for a time. Yeah, I never expected it to get so bad so quickly. Was it some other sickness to blame? Hmm, I wonder if I got cursed during a test of courage. If that were it, I should have gotten cursed too, right? No, I mean, uh, maybe? Ah, uh, Mr. Yoinara, do you dislike the occult? <laughs> Flavor text, uh, do you hate spirits? Dislike? Hmm, when you put it like that, maybe. Whoa, but it sure sounds like your job is to do with that stuff, that sender thing. I like to think of myself as a sniper, but for ghosts. Hey, which part don't you like? What I dislike about the occult. How the truth of it is unclear. Mm. Pursuit of truth. I wonder maybe how I'm not sure of what it really is. Mm? But there's even humans who I really don't comprehend. Indeed, dubious strangers are scary. In grade school, did you ever meet a ghost during a test of courage or anything? Uh, hmm. Did I ever? I feel that there were things along those lines, but after the fact, it typically starts to feel like they were just imagined. Yeah, that's how it goes. The scarier part was when I, my mom found out I snuck out at night and got mad. I, too, was yelled at upon being found out. Here in Japan, they say that fathers are as scary as earthquakes, thunder, and fires. But I suppose it's an era of mothers now. What about you, Mr. Yoinara? Is your wife scary? Hey, I'm single. My grandmother was harsh, though. We're the same in having someone who's frightening when angered, then. You may have conflicts from time to time. But try not to put too much worry on people who are thinking of you. That's true. Everyone's gotten a little less mischievous since they entered middle school. I don't know about that one. Personally, you still seem pretty mischievous to me. You may only know us from middle school, I'm Mr. Yoinara, but trust that this is much preferable to our grade school selves. Uh, if I looked at myself from a few years ago, I would cringe. The hardships that their grade school teachers face must be immeasurable. <laughs> okay, that was everyone. I wonder if I can duel conversations, which would be really unfortunate for me as the Let's Player, but let's find out. Let's see. Okay, no we can't. So, all the decisions we made were permanent. Let's see what everyone else had to say, kind of like, really briefly. Restaurants... Do, do, do. Okay. Real quick flavor text. Come on. Where's my cursor? Uh, inescapable relationships. Come on. I know you can do it. Moderate amount of rest. Mina's okay if she sleeps a little. Sleeping is good. Well, that's scary. I have to recommend those glasses to you, but... You recommended those, you champ? Next time we'll play a game that's unlike Werewolf. What would be a good one? I much prefer games that are a battle of minds more than those with strong elements of luck. Test your wits. 